Greetings gentlemen and ladies, in today's video we are going to be taking a look at a really fun workflow that allows you to go from 2D conceptual art to an animated 3D character using AI to generate the 3D model and then we're going to throw in a little bit of procedural walk animation for fun. Okay, let's dive into this video. Now there are a lot of art generators out there. The one that I like to use and that we're going to be using here today is called Leonardo AI. And the reason that I like it, actually there's a lot of reasons I like it, but one of the reasons I like it is this real-time generation feature right down here. We're going to jump into that. And what this allows us to do is by simply adjusting some of the sliders around, we can come up with an art style that we like. And then we can hit something like random seed to get a different character and a different character and a different character. We can, of course, modify the prompt down here. This might be a black robotic ant. And we can keep a nice consistent art style from character to character to character. That's really important if you're creating a game or... There's a really great range of art styles you can cycle through as well from something like a 2D pixelated type character, which would probably be pretty cool when transforming into 3D. Anyway, you tweak the sliders around until you find something that you like. And then uh, you can just adjust the prompt down here to get something different and random seed. You can also select from a bunch of different types of uh, configuration. So for example, maybe you want this to be more of a cinematic. Uh, that just looks like a pair of sunglasses. I wanted my aunt to have sunglasses. There we go. So you can adjust that around as much as you like. And then of course, when you're happy, hit that normal upscale button. Then we're going to come back to our library over here and we have our character in a higher resolution from the original. We can actually even upscale it again if we want to. We can go right here to upscale image and get an even higher resolution. That might help us to improve the textures, but I've actually created a character here that I want to play with. This little guy here. We're going to do our tutorial with this guy here. So I've already downloaded this image and what we're going to do next is we're going to hop on over to Hyperhumans Rodin. This is where we convert a 2D art into a 3D character. So they've added a bunch of new features in their latest update and they've actually reduced their pricing by about uh, 75%. So you can do about four times as much as you used to be able to do. So it's a really actually very, very reasonable. I think it equates to something like 25 cents for 20 or 25 cents for a model generation that includes a texture as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to look for our character I'm going to find my character here and I'm going to put him into the uh, uploadable area. There's a few different options now like generating a voxelized character and some other stuff that I haven't played around with yet. But if you guys want, I can make some videos on that in the future. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on generate here. And it takes about 30 seconds, but what we'll have is our rough preview mesh. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure the limbs and joints and everything is generally okay on this preview mesh, because once you confirm, that's when you get charged uh, your 0.5 credits. Like I say, pretty reasonable, but you can redo this a bunch of times and try to get it correct if it's not correct. Once you're happy, go ahead and click on confirm if you want to generate with more polygons or if you want to generate in hyper mode. Uh, if you have like really fine antenna or something like that, you might want to try that hyper mode. Uh, for myself, I find just the default 18,000 pixels that they recommend is good. So let's go ahead and click on confirm. I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, that's symmetrical and give that a moment to generate. Okay, after generation, we're going to see a much nicer looking model. Now you can go ahead and check out the wireframe of that. And as you can see, those polygons are very clean. Like that, I think, is quite nicely put together. I've tried, tried others. Even the fine detail, look at that. The fine detail down on the little antennas is looking quite good. I've tried others like Meshi, which do a, just a horrific job of putting together the polygons, but Hyperhumans Rodin. Uh, anyway, now that we've got what we like, let's go ahead and click on Generate. we got to do the material next. Uh, you can use the reference strength, crank that up to be a lot more like your reference source image, or if you want for Hyperhuman to kind of ad lib a little, you can leave that down a little bit lower. Uh, I like the reference photo, so I'm going to crank that all the way up to maximum. Oh, ho, 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 there we go. Look at this guy. That looks awesome. I actually love that art style. That came out really well. Sometimes your texture generations will come out better or worse depending on what your source is. But this one actually came out really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and select the FBX. And actually, I got to confirm that first. But then I'm going to select the FBX and I'm going to download with that 4K texture. Uh, I'm going to grab the PBR. I'm going to leave the shaded behind because I'm just going to use PBR. 
and I'm going to go ahead and click on download here. Okay, I'm hopping back into Unreal Engine, and uh, you could of course do this with all sorts of different applications. You don't need to be using Unreal Engine, of course. You could be using maybe Roblox, you could be using uh, modeling software, whatever the case may be. I'm going to go ahead and import our Antiboy. It's called base. That's the base.fbx. Going to give that an import. Now, by default, he's not going to be textured, but that's okay because we can very easily add those textures just by right clicking, go to new material. We're going to call that base, uh, base mat. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab the textures that came along with, and I'm just going to put those into my folder here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up that base mat material. And then we're just going to plug the texture diffuse into the base color. Oh, it looks good already. Grab the metallic, put the metallic into the metallic. Uh, we're going to grab the normal and put it into the uh, normal. And we're going to grab the roughness and we're going to put that right into the roughness. There we go. Now we have our anti-boy all textured up. Ha, ah, he looks great. Okay, and I'm going to actually apply that to my anti-boy's base static mesh model here. So we're just going to grab our base map material. We're going to put that in like so. I guess I better click apply and save. And voila, there's our anti-boy in the world with his sunglasses on and he's looking cool. So for those of you following along, I'm renaming base to new ant too, just so you're following along and not getting confused. Let's go ahead and add a skeleton to this. Now, if you're using Unreal Engine, you're going to need to enable the plugin, which is called Skeletal Mesh Editing Tools, available as of Unreal Engine 5.3 and later only. So go ahead and make sure you have that enabled. Once you do, you can click on your static mesh, right click I should say, and convert to a skeletal mesh. Leave everything default, that's fine, and just click on convert. Once you do that, we will be getting a skeleton and a skeletal mesh right down here that are generated around our static mesh. Let's go ahead and open up our skeletal mesh first, and what we're going to do here is we're going to add in some bones. I'm going to fast forward this part for the casual viewer, but for those of you wanting to follow along with the bone adding process, I have a full tutorial video that talks exactly about that and steps you through it. I'll link to that in the description below. It's relatively painless, only takes about five minutes once you get the hang of it. Next up, we're going to want to bind our weight maps. So what we do is we go bind skin under the edit skin weights over here. These are the settings I like to use, but I have a full tutorial on this also linked in the description. If all goes well, we shouldn't need to edit our weight maps. If we do need to edit our weight maps, well, that's what the expanded tutorial in the description link is for. All right, so now that we've got our guy all configured, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our skeletal mesh and right click, and then we're going to create a animation blueprint animation blueprint so this will be something we open up here now you have to make sure that you've got the procedural walk plugin installed i'll link to that in the description below this is not a free plugin it's like a 50 dollars plugin but it saves so much time the value is just amazing simple procedural walk we're going to go ahead and open up our animation blueprint and we're going to look for the mesh space reference pose to start and then from there, we're going to look for the simple procedural walk node. And we're going to connect that to so like this. Now, uh, this part's going to be fast forwarded. But for those following along, I have a detailed tutorial linked in the description that shows exactly how to set this up. In a nutshell, what we're going to be doing is adding in each of our legs, configuring their uh, hit location wherever they're meant to touch the ground and deciding how big of steps we want, how fast we want those legs to move, all sorts of little details like that. Pretty quick and easy, only takes about five minutes to set this up. Okay, lastly, let's make this character walkable. We're gonna use the Unreal Engine's third person starter point, that's the blue blueprint third person character, which will look like this when you open it up. You guys are probably familiar with this. And all we're gonna do here is replace the skeletal mesh with our anti-mesh. Uh, in my case, it's called Ant2, and then we're going to replace the animation class with our animation blueprint that we just made, uh, and we're going to place that like so. Give it a little compile save. Let's hop into game and see what happens. Oh, and there we have it, our little guy. He's alive. He's roaming the surface of Mars like a good little robotic ant would, could, and I dare say should. So here again is our starting conceptual art for a little bit of comparison. And here's our final 3D model. 
I think that came out really well. Gentlemen and ladies, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like this, I actually have a really good ro similar workflow for how to rig up a humanoid character. I'm planning to do some environmental assets and stuff like that as well in the future. But, uh, oh, and by the way, check out the links to all of these softwares in the description to this video. There are some referral links that help to support this channel. In addition to that, you get some discounts and uh, bonuses for signing up with my referral links. So check those out if you're interested in actually trying some of this stuff out for yourself. And thank you guys for supporting the channel, all 2,480 of you. I'm blown away. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.